This is the handover on the Auto Trail 2021 Tracker FB. So as we start the walk around of the vehicle, the first point you get to is your locker. So this is the locker underneath the lounge seat. So you, your round keys open your lock so you can manually lock and then you'll just push in and underneath here you've got storage and this is where your leisure battery lives so your main leisure battery lives in there and then you've got your mains connectivity points so these are just slides so slide get your hookah bleed lift the lift the collar on it slide the collar over the top and hook the vehicle up always hook the vehicle up first then walk to your power source and do it in reverse when unhooking the vehicle you've got more storage in here which is just a behind the sink so just a bit of storage you've got your external shower point so you just take this it's like a hose lock end so you take the cap off the bung connect your shower hose into there and then on the other end of the hose you've got a, tr a little small trigger gun and this is a cold water feed so it's good for the dogs um, if they've been on the beach the bikes if they've got muddy or your shoes just before I go any further also underneath here is the drop for your waste water so any water or anything you put down a plug hole goes into a separate holding tank in the open you just open on the side and drain off but there is a desired space on the site where you would do this called your grey waste drop and that's just the water we've tested the vehicle with coming further back behind your back wheel you have your fresh water drop so say you've taken on contaminated water or you want to drain the system down you just simply open and again you can do this on a desired space on site or if you're at home on your driveway, you can just open it up. But it's very important that you drain the vehicle down in the winter months by opening the fresh and waste outside, the boiler from the inside, and all the taps within the vehicle to eliminate any water in the pipes. As are just plastic tanks and pipes on a motorhome, so if it did freeze, it would crack and cost a lot of money to repair. Coming further up, this, this hatch is where your cassette is. So this is your toilet cassette. So first of all, make sure the blade is closed, otherwise you won't be able to get the cassette out. And then you'll be able to just put your fingers underneath, lift the orange handle and slide out. You have got a handle on there so you can wheel it around the site when it's heavy, as it has got wheels on. And then to empty what you do is you would remove the gray cap off the spout here. Press the button on the bottom there, tip it out which at your waste disposal point which is normally behind or beside your toilet block. Once you've tipped it out, if you put some water in, as is normally a tap, give it another rinse. Then if you're using the liquid form, you would do a cap full straight into here and it's ready to use. If you're using the tablets, this is when you'd put a pint of water in here and drop a tablet in either through here or you can drop one straight down the toilet and open the blade from in the toilet. Coming around to the back of the vehicle, you've got your high level brake light and rear view camera, reverse camera. Your spare wheel lives behind here, so you've got a full size spare wheel behind this acrylic GRP panel, which again opens with the main key that does all the lock. As this cover comes off, there's a big note and you can take it off. This customer's fitted the Thule bike rack to the tow bar, so to get that off, you would just lift here and release but I can show you how to do that on the day of collection it's quite a fiddly job to do one handedly and we've got a separate video on how to remove the tow bar on our channel which is a Witter detachable tow bar and then you've got storage underneath here so this is underneath your bed and there's your drain tap for your boiler which I'll talk about from the inside this is how to drain it down so I'll go into a bit more detail when I'm inside to show you and you've got a plug there 
for giving power if you wanted your awning out, if you wanted a bit of power in a blow up awning. There's a socket there. You've got your fresh water intake here. So this is where I would go and buy a hose pipe. It's just a brass tap on site, so you'll need all the hose lock ends, the screw on bit for the brass tap. Put your hose pipe in there until it either overflows or until you're happy you've got enough water on board, which you can see on the main control panel. Should you fail to get water to the vehicle in a hose pipe and you want to bring it in a bucket or an acrovol caravan style, there is a wheel submersible pump supplied with the vehicle and the pins go in here. You turn the tank fill on from the main control panel in the settings, which I'll show you from inside, and you put the little hose pipe end into there and it sucks the water out the, the barrel or the aqua roll into the vehicle. You've got your external sh gas point here, so this runs off the bottles on board. And as you can see there, you've got your spigot, so that needs cut off. You need some gas hosing, which is the orange rubber hosing and a Jubilee clip to collect that to the hose and then hose onto the gas appliance, so CADA, gas heater, and then you can turn the gas on and off from the gas tap. Truma vent for all the nasties, so it just allows the fumes out from the heating and hot water system. You've got your two fridge vents and your awning light. You can't manually open the habitation door should you require with one of the round headed keys, but it is central locking, so just lock it, that's locked. Top button opens the cab on its own, bottom button opens the habitation door, and as you can see, the step comes in, and then as soon as you lock, the step falls away. On the front here, you've got your LPG, so liquid petroleum gas, this is your gas locker. So if you turn these, lift this up, this is where you can fit two gas bottles. So always make sure the gas bottle is tied in with the straps. This is just our test bottle, so it's not, it'll not be staying on unless you want to purchase the bottle. And then you need a gas spanner or adjustable wrench to tighten the pigtail on the bottle and then turn on and off at the top of the bottle as well. Always make sure this yellow button on the pigtail is pushed in as that is your crash valve, and always make sure the bottle's turned off when traveling and securely fastened in the vehicle. And then on the passenger door itself, you've got your lockable fuel cap, so for your diesel, and your add blue. So your add blue light will come on between your temperature and fuel gauge, should it be required. It'll do about four to 5,000 mile on a full tank of add blue, which is 19 liters. So I would either carry one with you or you can buy AdBlue at most petrol stations now as it's on the pumps for the wagons and things so you can top that up. But do top it up when the light comes on as the vehicle could go into limp mode or if it goes completely low, it will not start at all. On the front here, you have your tire pressures, so five and a half bar front and back. Underneath the passenger seat is where you'll find your tool kit for changing that wheel, a jack and a brace and a screwdriver. Underneath the floor is the main location of your engine battery, but you do have a bonnet release here, so you can't jump. You have got a jumping point from underneath the bonnet, which I'll just show you. So your jumping point, your earths here, and your positives just there. So the cap sometimes covers it, so you may need to put the key in the side just to release that cap, and that's the positive. You've got your weight plate here, so it's three and a half ton gross vehicle weight. With that tow bar, your train weight is 4,750 kilograms. You can't exceed that. That's trailer and vehicle together. Got your paint code, which is gold and white 506. Oil filler and oil dipsticks for checking your levels. Brake fluid. Coolant, which you'd top up through here. Next to it, you've got your power steering fluid, which again, you top up from there, but the main one you're gonna need is your screen wash. So once inside the vehicle, above the habitation door is your main 12 volt control panel. It'll indicate just here, if you're hooked up on mains 240 electric. And then if I go through the switches on the front, you've got your on off, which will either turn the vehicle on or off, I have a 12 volt, or if you're lucky enough to be hooked up, you'll have 240 volt for all three pin sockets to work inside the vehicle. 
You've got your pump underneath, which you've got to have on to use the shower, the toilet, all the taps within the vehicle, and your external shower. Obviously, do not put that on if you haven't got enough water on board. Below, you've got your water levels, so this indicates you're fresh, which is saying 50%, and your waste zero. And then this is your battery, so it shows your leisure in your vehicle. So your leisure is 14.1 volt, 13.7 for your vehicle. Your active battery, which is always wants to be a leisure. This is the current coming off it, which is 9.3 amp. And then you've got your mains current coming in, which is 3.8 amp, and your solar, which is 2.4. Obviously your solar will go to sleep when the vehicle is hooked up, as this is the biggest charge coming in so it's better than the solar panel as its mains current and then on this side you've got your lights within the vehicle so this is a master switch then they all are individually switched you've got your owner light on the outside of the vehicle and you've got your dimmable lights underneath the lounge there so if you just press and hold you can dim them right down and you can set the dimmer level in the settings so if you go to the settings as you can see the active battery is on leisure, always leave it on leisure, do not put on smart and do not put on vehicle. If you put on a vehicle, the motorhome battery will then be running off the engine battery and not the leisure. And the leisure battery is designed to run the motorhome. And smart um, looks at both batteries and decides which one's got the most charging and it'll cross over. This is great for the solar panel, but not so good for the active battery as you don't want to flatten your engine battery. But like I was saying, Solar panel, if it's standing you may want to leave it on vehicle or smart and what it will do is it will just read both battery levels, if one needs to charge more than the other it will just switch it across to the one that needs it. You've got tank fill here, so like I've shown you from outside if you were unable to bring a hose pipe to the vehicle and you've got an aqua roll you can use your wheel submersible pump Click the tank fill and it'll send a 12 volt feed and start sucking the water out of the aqua roll in the vehicle. And you've got your tank heaters underneath so if it's going to be a cold night you can put them on and it puts current through the water to stop the water from freezing. You've got your light settings here so you can set your dimmer and what light goes on where. And then you've got your screen settings, your date and time there as well. Coming across from it you've got your Truma control panel for your heating and hot water. So to turn on and off you just press and hold and you'll get this screen here which shows you the time and if you press enter you've got the various settings so you've got the motorhome with the thermometer in. Don't worry this isn't flashing it just looks flashing on the camera. So if you go with the motorhome with the thermometer in this is the temperature of the vehicle so you can have it all the way to 30 degrees or all the way down or off. So once you're happy with the temperature, you just press the wheel and press OK. And then you put your water, so that's off at the moment. If you've got no water in the tank, don't put your water on as it will burn the element out. You've got Eco, which is heating the water at 40 degrees, Hot, which is heating the water at 60 degrees, and Boost, which turns the heating off and prioritizes the water. So you'd use Eco for showering, Hot for dishes, and then Boost if you wanted to have the water before you have the heating. For this we'll just say hot. Moving further along you've got which source it's coming off. So gas if you're well camping and you didn't have any electricity. Mixture of one kilowatt and gas. A mixture of two kilowatts and gas which you use in the winter which doubles the source and should then reduce the time it takes to heat the water or the vehicle. Electric on one kilowatt and electric on two. You'd use electric on two on most sites within the UK but just depends on what current they give to the hookup is the what electric you can have on. So electric on one you'd normally use a broader on the smaller sale sites. So for this we'll just say electric on two. And then moving further along you've got your fan so you can have it on eco or high. Eco is just a 12 volt assisted fan so you may want to use Eco if you're wild camping and you weren't hooked up, save so your battery and have high if you're hooked up, it's up to you. And then down in the bottom corner, bottom left hand corner you have your timer so you can time the heat to come on and off once. You've got the time on the main control panel, and then should you get a one and triangle you can go to the spanner in the bottom right, go to reset, press on the wheel 
it'll say preset, press again and it will reset the system. And then to turn off, you just press and hold. Across from the fridge, you've got your kitchen area. So you've got an electric hot plate on 240, which is the back one. So do make sure that you haven't knocked this and then you hook the vehicle up and you forget about it because it will smash the glass as heat will smash glass. So do just make sure because there's nothing that indicates that's on. You've got one gas ring there, two gas rings and a third one at the back which are all lit there on gas. And then below you've got your grill. So you may just want to take the grill pan out when travelling or wrap it up in a tea towel. And the same with the oven shelf, we'll always make sure the oven shelf goes back in with the lugs at the back as it's designed to stop the burner of the jet for the oven being blocked. And you've got your oven there. Underneath is where you'll find a bit of storage, but you'll also find the plug for your electric hot plate, anti-gas taps, which are mainly for when the vehicle is habitation serviced yearly. Any problems with gas, you can turn the bottle off to be safe, but you can isolate each appliance there as well. Above your microwave is a household microwave, so it'll only work on mains power, so you've got to be hooked up. And the plug for it is just in here, should you ever need to remove it or isolate it. But what you can do is, in here is where you'll find your sink cover. So that covers the sink, like so. Gives you a bit of extra space, worktop space, if you want to put your chopping board there to use the hob or prepare food. But when you're traveling, that just slides away in there and shuts. So to operate your Fetford fridge, so you've got a, a fridge here and a freezer above. So to operate, click the button here, turn it on and off. And then on the main control panel, the E stands for automatic energy selection. So what it is, it's got a there's a like an ECU brain of the fridge, and it will pick out the best source you have on offer. So if you've got mains electric and you're hooked up on a site, but your gas is open for your cooking facilities, it will go to electric first, as it knows not to waste the gas. If I was then to take the hookup out now and the gas was to be open, it would switch over to gas. And if I was then to start the engine, it would go over to the battery setting, which is a 12 volt feed from the alternator, which turns the fridge and freezer into a cool box. So don't expect to put everything in there and just put it on the 12 volt and expect that it'll be chilled by the time you get to site. That won't happen. You've got to hook the fridge up a day or two before if you're lucky enough to keep this at home or if you're going from site to site with shopping in obviously when you're on site you're hooked up so your shopping should be nice and fresh and chilled and then when you get the next site it'll just keep it chilled until you get there so it'll not get any warmer but it won't get any colder or you can manually press this button and go to different sources so I've got a battery there and it's failed because it's gone to a red light and it's showing a code 6 which means it's got getting no 12 volt feed or I can go to gas and it'll self ignite you've got your hookup or should I say you've got your temperature here sorry and then you've got this setting here so when the fridge is on and the freezer especially the freezer it's designed so the rubber doesn't get stuck to the door when it's on full temperature i.e. if you're away for a couple of weeks and you're living in the van but once you have finished using the vehicle for the winter you'll want to or for a couple of weeks or a couple of months you'll want to clean the fridge and freezer out give it a wipe down with some anti-back wipes and then underneath both catches so on top and bottom there's a little toggle so there's one there and there's one there they just clip into here and what they do is it's designed to keep the fridge door open and freezer door open and allow air circulation in and out the fridge to stop any mold from growing within the fridge or freezer. Next to it is where the table is housed, which is a little fiddly to get out, but just slides out. And then all you need to do is lift the legs like an ironing board and it just stores back in there. 
and underneath you've got a large storage drawer for either shopping or pans. It's a good place to put your pans. And, a, and you've got nothing above, that's just a fascia panel. So now in the washroom area, top of the toilet, you've got the electric flush on the back, which is where you need to have your pump on. So if you press this button to flush, this will start flashing. This is just a fan assist. If you just click on it till it goes to a solid light like it is now, it will stop the fan. And then this indicates that the cassette is full when you get more than one light on. So I think it's about three lights indicates that it's full. One obviously indicates it's empty. So if you press the button, you'll flush the toilet, like so. Once you're flushed, if you open the blade, which is this grey lever, so slide to the right. Always flush first, which lubricates the blade. Open the blade because the blade is not 100% watertight, which is a thing across all motorhomes. Otherwise, if you did fill it and then used it with it full and the blade shut, it can leak around the cassette and actually flood the compartment the cassette is in and you'd be forever mopping it out. So always flush first, lubricate the blade, open the blade, use the toilet and then you can then flush the toilet and then close the blade, which is if you just slide this back to the left, it isolates it and means you can get the cassette out the outside of the vehicle. You've got your light switch here, you've got your toilet cabinet, more toilet cabinet, magnetic shower screens with hanging reel for wet towels, or this doubles up if you can put some hangers on there for wet clothes. If you've been caught walking the dog or out on a bike ride or in the rain, you can use the shower head and what if, the, if you've got muddy, wash them off and then shut the door, put the heating on, and this toilet area gets lovely and warm. And you've got your skylight there, so if you push the catch in, pull the bar back, you can have it open all the way, or you can put into these grooves for a nice bit of ventilation, but always make sure the button is below the bar, which indicates that it should securely. You do have a blackout blind and a fly screen. You've got storage under the bed, so you can lift it up by first of all lifting the mattress, then lifting the frame. And as you can see there, you've got storage, you've got your carpets, your boilers in there which holds 10 litres of water at any one time. So in the winter months when it gets cold and you put the vehicle away for the Christmas months to spend it at home with the family, you'll want to isolate the water in that boiler so let it all out and to do so, just over here which you can get from the outside of the van via the locker door is the yellow toggle so when it's lying down like so it's holding water so the boiler is holding 10 litres of water if you lift it up like so it will drop its 10 litres of water directly out underneath the chassis leave it stood up during the time you've got the vehicle in storage and you're not using it open all the taps within the vehicle unscrew the shower head and allow the shower hose to lie in the shower tray to stop any water from being caught in the shower pipe and potentially freezing. Open the fresh in the waste from outside and drain the vehicle completely out of water. Otherwise, if any water does freeze in the vehicle, it isn't covered under warranty as it's your responsibility to winterize your vehicle to protect it from frost damage. And it would do it from here for the boiler, outside for the fresh and the waste water and then you'd open all the taps within the vehicle to eliminate any water that's already in the lines and your pumps over here as well so when you open the tap and you notice a vibration under the bed that's just because the pump is located here so to use your tally first of all there's a you can leave it on standby like it is now but there is an on off button and obviously that if you leave it on standby and you turn the main control panel off it will go off but there is a main button as well so if you ever think why is the telly not working just make sure on this side here this button is pushed in which brings on the red light and then if you turn it on by pointing the remote to the infrared light at the top it will go blue and then what you can do is 
So each time you move site, you will be required to retune your telly. And to retune your telly, you need to press this big button here, which says AQT. So you press and hold the big orange button at the telly. It'll ask you what country you're in. It's automatically set the UK. If you just press OK, it will do an auto tune and find as many channels as it can. Failing to do so, you've got a source button on there and you can put a DVD in the side of the telly which just goes just down here. If you ever got a satellite fitted to the vehicle in the future if you're going to plan on doing a more uh, trips abroad this telly is satellite ready so you don't need to replace the telly it's got a built-in satellite receiver and you, again you can just go onto source there and you'll find satellite telly but at the moment it's just digital so you'd have to run off digital telly off hdmi if you're going to plug any fire stick or um anything like that in stream onto it or you could use dvd and then obviously you just Fold that up and turn the turnbuckle there to secure it. So now in the cab, to the right of the driver you do have your handbrake. And then you put your Remus cab blinds here which you just pinch. Always allow the fronts to lead so never go like that, just go like this. That'll black the side windows on the driver's door and the passenger door. And then on the main windscreen you would just pinch them fold them in, do exactly the same on this side, meet them in the middle and it is just on a magnet so if it's going to be a windy night I would advise putting something round here as it's just a strong magnet so any wind could ping them open and then they just took away like so and then going back to the top of the door on the driver's side you do have your electric windows an electric mirror adjustment on the joystick at the front which does the top and the blind spot and then just down beside you'll see that you've got your headlight adjustment your rear fogs you've got your eco mode so you can put this on to save a bit of fuel i don't know how good it is as we haven't really tested it it's just on a new feature on the eco mode and then if you don't want your start stop to work you can disengage it like so but your start stop will only work under certain factors one being that the battery is to optimum charge and the second that there's nothing running that will take ch charge of the battery quickly when the engine is on ignition only so i.e. your climate control so with it being a manual on this model you just take your foot Take it out of gear, take your foot off the clutch, release it, and the engine will go out if the battery is too sufficient charge. You've got your wipe, wipers with your trip computer on the end here, which will go through the screen in the middle of the speedo. It'll tell you your range, your average and instant consumption, your traveling times, and so on. You've got your lights and your indicators on the top. And then you've got your cruise control at the top, which you turn on like so. And you get a little green light in the bottom of the rev count. Get at the desired speed and push up. Once it's set, should you have to cancel it, you can use the foot brake or you can cancel it by the button on the side there where my thumb is. And you can resume it there as well. And the bottom you've got your speed limiter. So if you go up in ones, the speed limiter goes up in ones. If you press and hold, it goes up in fives. And should you have your speed limiter set, but you're you're required to put your foot down to avoid an accident. You can just put your foot flat to the floor and it will override the speed limiter. On the steering wheel you've got your mute, your volume, your hands free and this will scroll through your tracks on your radio channels. Six speed manual gearbox with lift the collar and up here for reverse which brings on your rear view camera. You've got traction control so you can turn that off. Hill descent control which is not really um, needed on a manual model so forget about that. Hazards, locks the doors including the habitation door so it locks the cab doors and the hab door on the motorhome. You've got heated mirrors, you've got a USB for charging and a 12 volt for charging there. And then above you've got your temperature, so hot or cold. And then you've got your fan speed, must be on at least one or more for the aircon to work which is the button in the middle. And then you've got your distribution so where you want the air to go to. 
on whether you're circulating fresh air in the vehicle or recirculating air within the vehicle. Now coming to your Xcent head unit, which is a Xcent F XF220 unit. So to turn on and off, you press here, and this is your volume. You go to home, and you've got your menu. So your sat nav card just goes here. So you've got nav. And this is Motorhome Pacific Navigation, so as you can see, this is a map showing where we are on the A692. You can go here, which is your command, and you can put in a new route. So you can put an address, a saved location, or your history once you've started using the sat-nav. But this is designed for a motorhome. You can see there your speed, your time left of arrival, your mileage left and so on so if you wanted a summary of how long you've got to drive how many miles you've got to do how long it'll take you for an ETA you can go to there which is the bottom left hand corner go back to home you've got an FM tuner should you struggle to get DAB or you can go to DAB and you press 1 to 6 to save your favourite uh, channels there or you can press here and it will load your local stations local national and obviously all your BBC channels as well so that'll do that and then you can once it's loaded like there so you can go and you can then sc scroll through them and s save here going back you've got camera so if you wanted the camera on as a, re a permanent rear view as you haven't got a you have got a mirror on here but you can't see much you can have that on when driving forward in any forward gear you have your disc if you have a CD, USB is in the top glove box there which is heated and cooled by the aircon so it's a good place to keep things in the summer months like sweets when the aircon's on. You've got iPod and you've got Bluetooth so you've got Bluetooth. You'd go onto your phone, find Xcent, pair with it and then it'll ask you if you want to sync your contacts, press allow and then whoever rings it if they're saved in your phone book will come up with a number and a name instead of just a number and you can also use this to scroll through as well you've got shortcuts you've got home tuner which skips between fm and dab src which just changes through nav camera display so if you wanted you can turn your screen off and then you can touch it to come back on alternative av and you've got bluetooth at the bottom And then you do have to manually turn this off by pressing and holding.